Well, hello there. I'm Matt Miller. I'm a Region 2 Management Coordinator for Cook Inlet with the Division of Sport Fish, the Alaska Department of Fishing Game. Today, we're going to be talking about fishing for hooligan, the rich fish of the Pacific. So thanks for joining me. During the presentation, we're going to talk about what are hooligan, identification of hooligan. For example, this photograph has two hooligan in it, and they happen to be holding fish. Why do I want to catch them? Where can I catch them? How can I catch them? And of course, what are the regulations? We want to make sure when you're out there enjoying this fishery that you're staying safe and legal. So let's begin with what are hooligan, and we'll start with the science. So the scientific name of the hooligan is Thaliichthys pacificus. The Greek roots of that are thalia, meaning rich, ichthys, which is fish, and pacificus, of the Pacific. Hooligan are also called candlefish, or eulicon, or hoolies, and I'll use those terms interchangeably throughout this presentation. They're a type of smelt. Some of the other smelt that you might be familiar with are capelin, rainbow smelt, and longfin smelt. All of those are found here in Alaska. They're a small fish in Alaska, typically up to about 10 inches in length, and they're distinguished from a lot other Alaska smelts by the front dorsal is attached to the body well behind where the pelvic fin is attached to the body. They also have some canine-like teeth, and don't worry, these are typically lost as they approach maturity. So by the time they come in to spawn into the fresh water, they typically have no teeth at all. They're a blue silver in color in the salt water, turning to a gray, brown, and green when moving into the fresh water at, the water at spawning time. Males during the spawning, if you're interested in determining the, the gender of the fish, whether it's a male or a female, are easy to determine because they have tubercles or bumps from their head along the lateral line. And you can just run your thumb up the side of the fish when you're catching them when they're spawning, and it becomes pretty obvious. Uh, the females are quite smooth and the males are quite bumpy. One reason you might be interested in this is that typically the males will come in first and then the females start moving into the run. So if you can determine the gender, the sex of the fish that you're catching, you would give you some idea about perhaps how far into the run you are. So it's fine to see a hooligan sitting on the sand, but let's take a quick video at them in the water. You can see they're little torpedo-like fish. Uh, they're not particularly strong swimmers and they tend to hang out at the bottom. So why do I want to catch hooligan? Well, let's talk about why people traditionally caught hooligan. They were a very important food source to the indigenous populations along the Pacific coast. So they ate the hooligan, but they also rendered them for their oil and then exported that via trail systems along the Pacific coast, uh, linking them to the interior. Uh, the Dalton Trail, the Chilkoot Trail, and others became known as grease trails because that's where they had transported the hooligan oil. Hooligan grease was used as a substitute for butter, uh, seasoning, a base for sauces for cooking, for medicinal purposes, lamp oil, and many other things. In this picture, you can see on the, on the left uh, the dip netting for the hooligan with the dip nets and the drying racks there on the right. Uh, today, a lot of folks go out and catch them. Some people use them for bait, but the hooligan flesh tends to be pretty soft and it can be difficult to keep on a hook. So mostly, people are out eating them. Uh, two of the most common ways we have photographs of here. Uh, the first one on the left you can see is just frying them. Typically, people will head them and gut them, so just slit them up the belly, clean the guts out, and make sure you get that kidney, which is that black line that's right up against the spine. And you can typically get that out with a, a fillet knife or with even some kitchen shears and pull that out. Uh, they'll, people will roll them up then um, with some seasoned flour or some cornmeal and just fry them up in cooking oil. Uh, on the other picture here, we have uh, drying, which is another popular way to preserve and eat uh, hooligan. In this case, they were headed and gutted and then smoked, uh, smoked and dried. And at that point, you can preserve the fish like you do most any other fish like salmon. You can uh, eat them then, or you can preserve them by vacuum packing them, or jarring them, or canning them. 
That sound means it's time for a hooligan fun fact. Hooligan are called candlefish because that high oil content that makes them really valuable uh, for a lot of different reasons also means that you can actually dry the fish out and light them by the tail and burn them like a candle. True fact. So where can I catch them? Well, if you're in Alaska, you're in pretty good luck. The range for the Yulikon is from Northern California all the way across the Alaska coast up to Norton Sound up by Nome. Now, hooligan are anadromous, which means they spend part of their life cycle in fresh water and part of it in salt water. But unlike salmon, the anadromous fish you might be more familiar with, they don't have that fidelity to a natal stream, meaning they don't necessarily go back every year to the uh, stream that they were spawned in, that they were born in. Uh, rather, hooligan have very specific characteristics that they look for in a stream. So while they might go back to the same stream for many years in a row, if something happens to that system, for example, the temperature changes dramatically or something happens upriver to, to change the turbidity or the amount of affluent in the, in the water, uh, they might not go there. So you could go to a system that is known for a strong hooligan run and one year not see any hooligan. But if you look around, what you'll typically find is that they'll go up to a neighboring stream in that area. So the run hasn't disappeared. They've just adapted and moved to a different one. Um, the run is typically in mid to late May, is usually the peak of the hooligan runs. But really what you want to do is about that time and once the season opens is you start looking around for the, uh, the signs of predators. When you start seeing the goals out there, the eagles, the belugas, humpbacks, seals, and the sea lions, then you start taking a closer look or maybe go out and look around a little bit with a dip net. So there are several rivers in southeast Alaska and the lower Copper River that have hooligan runs. But this talk we're going to focus on Cook Inlet. And our main rivers here are the Susitna and other rivers up in Upper Cook Inlet, the Kenai, and of course, one of the most popular hooligan fisheries in Cook Inlet, 20 Mile River here on Turnigan Arm. So if you've gone out in the spring and seen folks parked along the highway and, and walking up and down the road with their nets, that's what they're there doing. Uh, they're, they're out dip net fishing for hooligan. 20 Mile is a popular place to dip net for hooligan in the spring for a number of reasons. Uh, one, uh, dip netting for hooligan is one of the first fishing activities that Alaskans can do in the spring. Uh, I've been cramped up all winter. You really want to get out there. Hooligan fishing is a good way to get out and, and start fishing again and dust your gear off. The 20-mile run is pretty reliable. The hooligan will come back there most every year. You always see them out there. And it's close to Anchorage, one of the big populous centers. It's only about 45 miles out of town. It's just the Anchorage side of Portage. Just a side note, the name 20 Mile River isn't because it's at mile marker 20 from town, it's because the river itself is about 20 miles long. So again, it's just about just this side of 45 miles out of Anchorage, so it's still pretty close. So we'll come back and talk about uh, 20 mile regulations a little bit later. But for a special bonus, there's new parking out there this year. Uh, the parking in the past, as I had just mentioned, was often people parking along the road or cramped up there at that 20-mile bridge by the boat launch, and there was issues with people blocking the boat launch so that uh, others couldn't use it, and the danger is just of parking along the, the road, the highway. So there's a new parking lot there now. It's just, I believe, about half a mile this side of the 20-mile bridge, so it should give uh, dip netters a great place to park and then safely access that uh, fishery. So let's talk a little bit about the Susitna River hooligan fishery. All the main stem Susitna area that you see here in this map is where hooligan can be found. And this map, by the way, is from our reg booklet um, to show the personal use salmon dip net fishery. So this map is on page 15 of our reg booklet. The most productive places to fish here are in the Yitna River, from the mainstream Susitna downstream of the Deshka River uh, down to about the lower part where it starts braiding out there at the mouth. And some of the most productive places are also marked by the personal use dip net fishery on this map. So the place where people go out and are allowed to fish the dip net salmon fishery is also very productive earlier in the season in spring 
for that personal use hooligan fishery. Um, access to this fishery is typically through Deshka Landing. Uh, folks will pull into Deshka Landing and from a boat will drive down the Susitna downstream and then start looking for that predator sign, mostly on the Susitna you're looking for goals. So where you see a lot of goal activity, sometimes people will just drop an anchor and fish from their boats, but mostly they'll just pull over uh, to a sandbar, a gravel bar, and start fishing from shore, because as we'll talk about, the hooligan are bank-oriented fish. So how do I catch them? The most popular method is to dip net from shore. So for this, you're gonna want some knee boots or some waders. Uh, in some places, we'll talk about you might want some chest waders. You'll want a bucket or a cooler or a tote, something to put your fish in, and of course, a net. And as always, dress for the weather. This is springtime in Alaska, and you're going to be on the water, so it's typically colder than you're gonna expect it is. Of course, you're also going to need a net. Uh, you can see people in this picture use a variety of nets. I'd recommend something like the inset uh, in the picture here. Let's see if I can hit that with a highlighter. This little guy right here. Uh, things that I like about this is you'll want to look for uh, the mesh size, which is probably, you'll want to look for a mesh size of about half an inch, maybe up to an inch, a little bit larger, but if your mesh gets much larger than an inch, get up to an inch and a half, and the hoolies will slip through, or else you'll gill them, and then it's very unpleasant to try and get them out of your net. The other thing about this net that I like is it has a small, a pretty shallow cot end or a bag on it. If you look, for example, at this net, this one's working fine. You can see that this angler has some uh, hooligan in it, but that long cot end is going to make it rather difficult to empty the bag out and to put your catch into the bucket or something. So uh, in my mind, I would go for the more shallow net on there. Uh, other things you're going to want is your Alaska, your current Alaska sport fishing license. So the Cook Inlet hooligan fisheries are personal use fisheries and they don't require a permit, but you do need to be an Alaska resident and you have to have your current Alaska sport fish license with you. So sweeping is the most popular method for, for dip netting hooligan. Uh, the hooligan tend to like glacial systems and a lot of places you can actually sight fish for them. Uh, you can see them just this dark ribbon of fish swimming right along the shoreline. I, I think, I didn't take this picture, but I think this is from the Kenai. Um, and I've seen them like that before. It's just this constant ribbon. They're right up against the shore. So if you're in a place where there's a more defined bank or a bit of a cut bank, you can often just stand on shore and take your, your dip net handle and go in there. Uh, in other places, like in Cook Inlet, you can't see them. The water's just far too turbid and it's much shallower. There's not a real defined um, sort of cut bank there. So in this case, people often use the chest waders that we talked about earlier. So however you are, if you're fishing from shore or wading out a bit, uh, take the net, move it upstream, hold it at about a 45 degree angle, and then slowly sweep it down uh, going with the current because the hooligan will be swimming up against the current. Keep the net on the bottom hooligan don't tend to be very strong swimmers, so they prefer to swim down at the bottom, and you'll feel them bumping into the net. So at the end of that sweep, just bring them up and dump your catch into a bucket or a tote. Uh, when the run is really strong, hooligan can be caught almost any time, but in intertidal areas, you may be more productive for an hour or two before or after, so either side of that high tide. So here's a little video here. This is actually my kid uh, many, many years ago on the Kenai. Uh, we got down there in the spring and saw a hooligan, like I showed you in that picture, we're running in the band. So we literally just grabbed an insect net that we had there at the camp and duct taped it to a stick and uh, let him go dip net some, some hooligan that way. Can you turn them upside down? Wow, look at that. Wow. I caught, so, I caught more than 10. When they're running, Hooligan. that's really all there Smelt. is to it. There you go. That sound means it's time for another Hooli fun fact. Now, this one you probably won't find in the literature. 
hooligan smell like cucumbers. True story, I swear. So as you're out fishing, if you're handling the fish and you're you're in their net and you're you're dumping them in your bucket and you're handing them, you've got some some fish stink on your hands. Just smell your hands and your fingers. There will be a very distinctive, freshly cut cucumber smell to them. Again, you probably won't find this in the literature, but it's true. So let's talk a little bit about the regulations. Again, we want to make sure that Alaskans are out there enjoying this fishery, but are also staying legal, staying safe. So the Cook Inlet personal use fisheries are found in this book on page 16. There is no permit required, as I'd mentioned before. You must be an Alaska resident to participate in the personal use fishery, and so you need a resident sport fishing license. Unless you're under 18, then you just need to be an Alaska resident. The season is April 1st to May 31st. It's open in salt waters, and April 1st to June 15th, it's open in fresh water. So the fishery follows that hooligan as they follow their spawning up into the fresh water. There's no bag and possession limit, but let me caution you right now. Determine how many hooligan you really want to process, whether for bait or for food, before you go out and, and get a bucket or a cooler and, and keep that in mind because as the fishing gets good, it's really easy to start catching them and to take more fish than you may need or want to process or deal with later on. So just be mindful of taking the fish that you need in a fishery with, with no possession limit. They may be taken in the waters of Alaska with a dip net. And in the Kenai River from April 1st to June 15th, you can also use a handheld gill net from the mouth of the Kenai River up to Cunningham Park. So if you have any questions, again, I'm going to be pushing the South Central Regulation Booklet or whatever part of the state you're in. Get your area, your regional regulation booklet. Page four to five has information on getting your sport fishing licenses, which you'll want to get online now. It's safe, it's easy, you've got it online. Um, page 16 has information specifically about the personal use fisheries. Uh, you can see the one here for smelt or hooligan. And what I think is the most underused portion of this book, if you look on the back page, Right over here on all of the books is a map of that specific area and phone numbers, contact numbers for each of your local fish and game offices. So if you have any questions, use those phone numbers. We have sport fish information staff that are top notch and they're there at the counter to answer questions and to answer the phones and they will get you the answers and they'll give you updates on fishing. They really want to provide you with the information you need to have a, su a successful fishing trip. So don't forget to use those numbers and, and contact the staff before you start heading out if you have any questions about it. And with that, I just wanna thank you for your time. I hope you found this useful and good luck fishing. Thanks. <laughs>